shiny. Look, I made an actual candle tutorial that worked out. <laughs> oh man, guys. All right, let's get started. Got it? Hey, what's up? We're back. We're back finally. <laughs> And we've got a new candle tutorial for you. Look how beautiful it is. So basic supplies. You need some wax. You're going to need a wick. Uh, I use brown dye for this and some scent. Uh, you're also going to need a container for your candle, something to froth your wax with, and a container to put that frothy wax in. Double boil method here, melting my wax. And uh, these glasses, well, this glass, I got it from the Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree, y'all. Uh, also, I got this milk frother from Ikea. It was two bucks. Two bucks, guys. It works like a charm. And I don't feel bad if I accidentally ruin it. <laughs> so, I decided to go one step further with my candle. And we threw some glitter on top. So, get yourself some glitter. I need to stop talking like that. I'm so white. <laughs> Alright, so first steps first. You're going to put your wick into your glass by dipping it into your wax and adhering it to the base of your desired vessel as so uh next i decided i didn't want a full dark brown uh candle so i cut my flutter die in half that's what's so great about these dies you can easily you know easily use less uh, i did end up using half of the uh, dye anyway. Pour in your scent. I'm using a Bayberry, I don't even remember what it's called. It smells like perfume, really. Um, I, again, as always, I will post all the ingredients I use into the description below. Mix up your scent, and before you dye your wax, pour some off into whatever container you're going to froth your wax, um, for the top part, so that it's white. So it looks like whipped cream. Uh, you want it to set a little bit before you start frothing it because it'll just take a little less time. I could have waited longer, but you know. So set it off to the side to let it start hardening just a little bit. And then add your dye into your wax and start stirring it. When you're using flutter dye, you want to keep your wax kind of on the heat because it'll melt faster into there. Uh, next, take your cup, pour in some dye, pour in some dye, pour in, pour in your wax. You know what, guys? It's early for me. I haven't even had a full cup of coffee yet, <laughs> so my apologies. All right, you want your wick to stay in the center, so get yourself a doohickey to keep it in the center. Some people use two chopsticks tied with rubber bands. Um, I have some candle wick holder thingamajigs that I slide onto my candle. Pro tip, when you are pouring things into vessels, use a like a blow dryer to heat up your glass so that it's slightly warmer than room temperature. That way as you're pouring in your candle, you're not going to get those funky lines as it hardens as it hits the glass. So warm up your containers first to make it more of a smooth exterior. Anyway, back to the video. Move your glass aside, pull out your wax that you're going to froth and take your whatever tool. You could use a whisk, that's gonna take longer. Some people like to use those, um, I don't even know what they're called, some sort of churning tool. Uh, totally up to you. But again, I'll link where I got mine. I think you could get it online, because Ikea ships. Um, yeah, so what you're basically doing is you're incorporating air, uh, cool air, hopefully, into your wax to help it harden faster and to help give it some volume and that's gonna help um, it look more like whipped cream part way into this I speed it up but there is a, a, a sort of a consistency you get to where you can put it in a piping bag I which is pretty cool because then you can do um, different tips like piping tips to make roses or make like a swirl like a cupcake swirl I have never tried that yet that will be one of our future tutorials I'm sure 
but I first learned how to do this because I've seen it on candles for a while. I first learned how to do this by watching um, a tutorial or a video by Wickedly Goods, and I will link her video below because, you know, you gotta give credit where credit is due. I watched her do it, and um, she's got an awesome accent, so <laughs> definitely watch her channel. Um, she has tutorials on, like, soap and candles from what I've seen. I haven't watched a whole bunch of her videos yet because I haven't had a chance to, but definitely check her out. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, I'm going to speed it up here because uh, this is su superbly boring. <laughs> but you're, like, literally, this takes forever. Uh, the longer you let it harden before starting, obviously the faster this will be. I probably should have let it sit for longer, but, you know, now we know. But it's okay because it's going to look cool. Uh, la, la, la. All right, so here is about where it should be if you want to pipe it, I feel like. It's kind of a thick cream. It's starting, so as this gets thicker, it starts to slow down my milk frother because it's, you know, it runs on AA batteries. It's not the most powerful thing. This is about the consistency you want to pipe, I feel, uh, I feel is best. Um... So, right as it starts to slow down my milk frother, I know it's, it's getting there. But I want to go a little bit longer because I want it to look kind of chunky, like um, like you've been scooping up you know, homemade whipped cream. So, I go a little further and make more of a mess. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my gosh. So long. It takes so long. So we're getting there. What I forgot to show is that once I was done, it was still a pretty smooth, creamy texture. I kind of took a spoon and moved it around a little bit, and that's how I made it go a little bit more like cottage cheese chunky look, which is what I was looking for for whipped cream. I could, you could totally pipe this on. Um, so here, here it is more chunky and in pieces. Now it's still hot and soft enough that once I put it all on there, I can kind of press it together to get it to solidify enough that it's not falling off when I move the candle around. Um, but this is just, it's still pretty hard, or it's pretty warm and soft underneath when I get out the big scoops. Uh, make sure you turn your candle so that you're getting all sides, because, you know, you can't just look good from one angle. Keep piling it on until you're satisfied. Make, you know, make sure you leave enough of the wick, though, so you can light it. Um, one tip that was mentioned in the in the videos I had talked about, about making candles, um, that Wickedly Goods mentioned, she leaves a little bit of a, like, a hole around the wick. I, I didn't, because I totally forgot her tip. She says if you leave a hole around the wick when you're putting on the the topping part it will leave a space so that when you melt your candle it'll fall into that hole the melted wax will so anyway there you have it guys your basic batch candle I don't know why I have to say it like that <laughs> but I wanted to go one step further all right because like this is good but it's not like over the top like basic bitches are so, next step, get yourself some glitter, girl. Get some glitter. I use gold and silver because, you know, it's how we do. Sprinkle that shit on top. <laughs> Hell yeah. Sprinkle that shit on top, girl. This is superbly boring. <clears throat> All right, there's the silver. Now some gold. Gotta have some bling. You could go one step further and add glitter to your candle wax as you're melting, but I don't like to add crap into my pour pot personally because I don't want to have to scrape it out because <laughs> I'm lazy. But, so that's why I just put it on top. And I uh, made a huge mess, as always. Always, guys. I didn't spill wax this time. 
Oh my god, you guys notice that? I didn't spill any wax, just glitter. So follow me on Snapchat and Twitter at Your Wax Girl because I post some behind the scenes shit there and all sorts of other fun things and you can contact me there. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope your candles are fabulous. Bye.